Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Investing won't make you rich. Well, at least it won't for the typical person. Now don't get me wrong, I love investing and I think everyone should be doing it. As a matter of fact, that's one of the main underlying themes of this entire channel. By investing, you can grow your wealth and create a more abundant lifestyle. So I'm definitely pro-investing. But if I'm so pro-investing, why do I make the statement of investing won't make you rich? There's a good chance you've probably heard of that old fable where it presents the choice of either having a million dollars today up front or a penny that doubles every single day over the course of a month. In actuality, that story was spun from an Indian folk tale about rice, appropriately titled One Grain of Rice. But nonetheless, for our purposes here, we're going to stick with the money version. Surprise, surprise, the penny doubling every single day nets you almost $5.4 million over the course of 30 days, exceeding the solitary million by a long shot. Okay, in that example, investing does make you rich, and it makes you rich quite quickly. But that's not a real-world example. First and foremost here, the investment is doubling. It's netting the investor 100% return over and over and over again. I mean, if you can find an investment that nets you 100% return once, that's fantastic. Finding one that does it over and over and over again is highly unlikely. The typical investor is going to invest in something like the S&P 500, which has an average annual return of slightly over 10%. So using that return rate, it would take your money 7.2 years to double. This is what's known as the rule of 72. Take the number 72, divide it by your return rate, and that is how many years it will take your money to double. The higher the return rate, the less time to double your money. The lower the return rate, the longer it takes to double your money. That's pretty common sense. So let's say that you invest $10,000, a significant sum to be sure, in the stock market when you're at the bright young age of 20 years old. Let's say you're able to capture a cool 12% return, meaning that your money will double every six years. A great return for you, and it keeps the numbers simple for me. Let's say that you leave this money invested until you are 68 years old when you plan to retire. Given this time frame, this will allow your money to double eight times at that 12% interest rate. By the time you retire, you've got a little bit over $2.5 million, which is wonderful. But what if you weren't fortunate enough to have $10,000 to invest at the young age of 20? What if you had to wait until you were 26? You would lose out on one of those doublings, and that would leave your net worth at just $1.2 million. Or worse, what if you started at 32? You lose out on two of those doubling periods. Now you're at just $640,000. At the end of the day, you only have a finite number of years where you are able to work, save, invest, and grow your wealth. Allowing your money to stay invested, giving it another chance to double, is wonderful. Giving yourself a longer time horizon, not interrupting that compounding interest, that is the best thing that you can do. But there does come a time when we need to step away from the workforce, and without a paycheck, we begin to withdraw from the savings that we work so hard to build over the course of our career. And there's another factor to consider. What if you weren't able to capture that 12% return rate over the course of your entire lifetime? The fact of the matter is, a realistic return rate for the S&P 500 historically has been about 10.5%. And if we had used 10.5% in our previous example, that final lump sum at the age of 68 would have been more like 1.2 million, a drastically different amount than 2.5 million. And most of us aren't investing one lump sum at a very young age. Rather, we're going to spend the entire working years of our life investing, and we're going to be investing various amounts. And we're not going to be getting a constant rate of return. Instead, we're going to be getting various rates of return. But honestly, working with a constant rate of return is just easier from a standpoint of calculations. So that's what we use here. If you were to invest $5,000 every year for 40 years and capture a 10% rate of return, you would end up with roughly $2.6 million. If your rate of return was reduced to 8%, you would have $1.5 million. And if that rate of return was just 6%, it would net you under $900,000. 
What if you were more aggressive, investing $10,000 per year, every single year for 40 years, and capturing a 10% rate of return? That would net you $5.3 million. $5 million sounds a lot better than $900,000 as far as a retirement is considered, but it depends on realistically how much you can invest and the rate of return you can capture. Ultimately, the best thing you can do for your investments is to extend your time horizon. The longer you can leave your money invested, the longer it has for compounding interest to work its magic. And it's really important to note that there's a pretty stark difference between being wealthy and being rich. A million dollars is a vast sum to be sure, but it's hardly a marker of wealth for the rich. According to a recent survey by Ameriprise Financial, only 13% of American millionaires classify themselves as wealthy. Even some of those surveyed who had more than $5 million across their bank accounts, investments, and retirement accounts said they didn't feel rich. There's that old saying that wealth is silent. Wealth just very well may look like the person driving to work every single day for 40 years in a Ford Taurus, taking a handful of family vacations every single year, helping their kids through college, and eventually settling into a comfortable retirement with their significant other. That's not what rich looks like. Rich could very well be driving up to your brand new several million dollar home in a brand new Aston Martin. Rich is what you see on television, and a lot of those people flexing on social media. Now, I like to watch quality television, like The Real Housewives. Don't judge me, we all have our vices. But on this particular episode, one of the ladies got into a fight with another one of the ladies, and she just said, that's it, I'll leave. My husband will have a jet here by tomorrow. Now, when I heard that statement, I had two thoughts. One, I married the wrong person because there's no way I could get a jet anywhere on any day. Sorry, Steve, but I really do wish you could get me a jet. But two, that's what Rich looks like. And they didn't get that way by investing. They got that way because her husband built an incredibly lucrative business that now affords her a very lavish lifestyle. That didn't happen through sensible investing. You can get wealthy and create a very comfortable lifestyle through this route, but ultimately, in a best case scenario, you're gonna end up being a baller on a budget. Rich is fast, wealth is slow. Rich may take just a decade and then suddenly someone with a very high income or with several income streams is able to afford that multi-million dollar house or even perhaps a jet. Wealth takes a lifetime to build and never really reaches those same echelons. Rich happens when someone is a very high income earner or builds a very profitable business or a series of businesses or lucks out with that rare investment. But investments like this are hard to come by and very risky. Money that is easy to make is often easy to lose. Investments that return 1,000 or 10,000%, that's not the norm. The norm is the S&P 500, and it's about 10%. And this is a solid plan for building wealth and creating financial independence. But then there are those ads that you see here on YouTube and all over the internet where you have some young hotshot stepping out of a Lamborghini, and they're like, well, I retired at 30, and now I make $4,000 a day passive income, or something along the lines of, I started with $1,000, and six months later, I was a millionaire. Click the link, and I'll teach you how to do it. BS. That is total BS. You're not making $4,000 a day and you didn't become a millionaire in six months time. Let's just say you did for a second. We'll entertain the idea. If that was actually the case, this person would have a one-way ticket to the hedge fund managers, not marketing their course here on YouTube. There's a reason they're here on YouTube. Hedge fund managers, the professionals, would see through their smoke and mirrors. There's the hope that some people here on YouTube will click the link. Some people do. Remember, Warren Buffett is not out there teaching people how to invest. He keeps that as a tightly guarded secret for himself. If people were actually this successful, they're not gonna market it to you in a $29.99 course here on YouTube. That fancy car is rented. He did so so he could take some fancy pictures to market a course to the public. He doesn't have what he claims to. How he's making his money is marketing a course, not by what he's actually saying in the ad. If these ads were realistic, they would look something like this. 
Hey guys, you wanna know the secret to lasting wealth? It's live below your means, invest the difference, and do that for the next 30 to 40 years and you'll be all set. There is no secret, there is no fast track, it's simply discipline. And please make no mistake about it. If someone is rich, I'm happy for them. If someone's wealthy, I'm happy for them. If you can be that all out baller or you're a baller on a budget, go you. I am not happy for these people who are out here doing these scammy little lies and YouTube ads pretending to have what they don't actually have. Most people don't become rich. It takes more than diligent investing but it is very possible for the vast majority of people to generate wealth through investing. I love investing and I think everyone should be doing it, but I also think it's important to set a realistic expectation when it comes to investing. It's probably not gonna make you rich, but that's okay because rich people aren't any happier anyhow. Financially secure people are happy though, so keep investing. Well, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, or if you know of anyone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.